Hi everyone, it's Raina. So this video is looking at the games that Cancer plays. Cancer is a cardinal water sign. And I'm not going by a book that came out in the 60s called, called Games People Play. But it gave me that idea. Because... Um, you know, people who are not living authentically, they tend to interact with people in a very um, ca calculated way sometimes. Although I, I think that a lot of these games are unconscious, that they're just habitual patterns, that the person is so lacking in awareness of their own motivations that they do these things and other people can fall into that trap of reacting to such a person but then there comes a time when I think if you're in a relationship with a toxic individual that you finally begin to understand that they do these things over and over again one of the games that Eric Byrne, that's the, the man that I'm referring to, uh, that book that he wrote called Games People Play in 1964, that he had, he labeled all these different games. And it's kind of a funny thing. If you look at the, if you look at the descriptions of his games, it, it, it'll make you laugh because they have funny names. But one of them is called Let's You and Him Fight. And that's really what we call triangulation. When you talk about somebody behind their back to somebody else about that other person, and then, you know, you're talking to the other person about that person. So there's like a, a three-way situation and you're carrying tales about both people and now they are angry at each other. And the person does that to maintain a sense of power within that relationship with those two people. You see that a lot with a narcissistic parent. And, um, well, yeah, you can, yeah, the triangulation, you can see that with a narcissistic parent. I, I, I think that that can happen with friendships too, where one person wants to be kind of the friend that is sought after by the other people. So they kind of spread things to the other parties. Does a cancer person do this? I don't know if a cancer person would be prone to this. But I'm going to talk about certain things that I do think cancer people are prone to do. Now, remember, this is going to be negative behavioral patterns. So I'm not saying that if somebody is a cancer, they're going to be like this. This is a dysfunctional cancer person. So um, because cancer is a water sign, and I think also because it's a cardinal sign, cancer people are very aggressive about relationships. You know, Pisces is a water sign, but they're not, they're more passive. A cancer person is very active in seeking out and maintaining relationships. Cancer is a sign, is the sign of the crab, and the crab has claws, and those claws can cling to things, of course, people, and they can also cling to memories of the past, and so cancer is very attached to the past, and one of the things that cancer does as a water sign is try to manipulate when they are not, when they are imbalanced. And one form of manipulation is guilting other people. And so because um, cancer is a water sign, it wants to be loved. And when a cancer person, probably through trauma as a child, didn't feel that sense of love, 
or maybe it's a past life influence. I don't know. They can be almost like demanding of it. So if th these relationships that I'm referring to are going to be close relationships, it doesn't always have to be your significant other. Um, you could be listening to this and have a cancer parent, a cancer child, um, a cancer boss, or, you know, the boss relationship I'm going to leave out because that, that could definitely show up here, but I'm, I'm really talking about relationships that are personal relationships, like a friend or a sibling. And let's talk about like a friendship. And let's say you're a fire sign or an air sign and you're more detached. Fire signs are emotional, but they're not necessarily the kind of people that they like their freedom a lot. So even though they are passionate about people, places, and things, they like to explore and they want their freedom. And if they're in a relationship with somebody, anybody, it doesn't have to be a partner. It could be a friend. It could be a parent who is trying to stifle their freedom. That's going to piss them off. And the, the cancer person may perceive that love of that person's freedom as a sign of they don't care about me enough. They're, neg they're neglecting me emotionally. Cancer is prone to self-pity. Even the ones that are balanced have to watch out for that. And so being accusatory uh, towards somebody and saying, you know, you don't care enough about me. And if the person reacts in a more detached manner, then they're even more offended and hurt. And then they go and they sulk and they're hurt. And that's a manipulation too. And I'm not saying that that cancer person doesn't feel hurt that they're faking it. They may feel it very deeply within their soul. But they have learned some dysfunctional patterns. They have learned to be hypersensitive um, and take offense to things that they shouldn't have taken offense to. And this is another thing that they do where you say something and you might have even meant it in a positive way. You didn't mean like a veiled insult or, you know, like a backhanded compliment. And the person, the cancer person is actually actively offended by it. I'm trying to think of an example. Um, well, I was going to say something like if you say, wow, you look great. If you haven't seen, if you haven't seen someone, let's say this is a senior citizen who's a cancer and you say, you look so young. And they, they say, what, you think I'm old? You know, but that's not really a good example because that might be kind of like, I don't know, that might be kind of insensitive to say something like that or awkward. But there are things that people say innocently and the, pers the, the other party reacts very much like they're offended. And, um, so taking yourself to ser taking oneself too seriously. When I say yourself, I am not speaking to the person listening to this. Um, being very accusatory and demanding emotionally. No one has a right to demand that somebody else um, act a certain way within a relationship. We don't have that right. Now we can, we can say, I expect you to be respectful of me. And if that person, you know, continues to be disrespectful, we can cease to have a relationship with them. Um, so I'm not speaking about having boundaries, 
but to demand love from somebody is absolutely uh, unreasonable and unacceptable uh, because when we're in relationships with other people, it's not to fulfill an agenda. It's because we, we are interested, we like their company, we are interested in how they think, how their mind works. We have, we just have this attraction to them on some level. And that has to be enough. I understand that some people do feel that the other party doesn't love them, doesn't show them that they care. And I don't think there's anything wrong with, you know, telling a partner when you do this or that, I feel like you don't care about me. Um, but depending on how that person reacts, I don't think that anyone has a right to demand affection from another person, even a, even a husband or wife. It just doesn't work that way. If that person can't give it to, to um, you, you have to get it from someone else. So if you're involved with a cancer individual and they are trying to imply that you're never there for them emotionally enough. Definitely, before you react to that accusation, ask yourself, is there a grain of truth in this? Am I too self-absorbed? But then if you feel that you have, going back to that original example of friendship, that you do care about them, that you do call them sometimes where they are, they're not the only one that has to call in the relationship or whatever the situation may be, that that person is placing unrealistic, unreasonable demands upon you. And you don't have to defend yourself in that situation. But, um, The problem is that this is the type of person who tends to be very nurturing to other people. So they may, you know, make their friends a beautiful meal. Cancer people can be great cooks and they pamper the people that they love. And so they may have some ammo to back it up with to say, I do all this for everyone and no one gives me what I need. Um, and there's that martyrdom. So I think guilting is a big part of this and guilting is very problematic in relationships because it triggers within us this sense of obligation. And a lot of times that person, there is a grain of truth in what that person is saying because the cancer person may be very caring. Um, but in some cases they're doing this, they're giving to get, they're, they're, they're baking the pie so that you feel obligated to call them every week or the, and it's like being somebody's property. It reminds me of the sign of Taurus where you become their property and you're not their property. So another thing that can happen is the cancer person can be very moody. If you're in a close relationship with a cancer person, this can um, affect you adversely if you are an empath because you're going to be very susceptible to other people's moods. So depending on how severe it can get, if this person is either bipolar where it's very extreme or if they are just um, crabby, you know, the crab, and they're just very, you know, kind of like in a negative, a pissy mood or something like that, um, it's hard to be around 
that kind of person too. So it almost becomes like a self-fulfilling prophecy that people who have mood um, disorder or other types of lack of regulation with their moods, that they can be so quick to accuse other people of not caring, but they are not easy to be around to begin with. Another thing that these people might do is be very um, enmeshed with another person. And this is kind of um, what I was just talking about, like being a nurturer, but kind of smothering a person. So being overly involved, if they're a friend calling you every day or every other day, like your family member, uh, but a family member, um, just because somebody is a, is a member of your family doesn't mean that they should be calling you every day. Even a parent, if you're an adult man or woman and your mother or father is calling you constantly, unless you are like best friends and you really have this unusually close relationship. And I will say, you know, everybody's different. And some people just really have that type of relationship, even though, um, this person is your parent, you have, when you have become an adult, your relationship has, um, expanded where they respect your adulthood and you can talk every day without it feeling like, they're trying to control you. Um, but in other cases, then that's fine, you know, but in, in a lot of cases it can be unhealthy. The, the parent can be, um, they can't let go of the fact that their child has grown up. Um, and that, or, or even, like I said, it doesn't have to be a child. It could be a friend that, uh, and so maybe in those cases where it's a friend, Perhaps they have an empty nest syndrome and they are trying to replace the contact that they always had with their child with a friend. I don't know. But I could see two girlfriends in their 20s. And, you know, one of them is a cancer and is constantly calling the other person. And just like I said about a parent child relationship that is unusually close. I mean, maybe there are two friends who are so close that they call each other every day and that there's nothing wrong with it. There's no um, boundary violations happening, but you will see that even in those types of friendships, let's say one, I, I was going to say, let's say one of them gets a, um, a partner but it doesn't even have to be, I, I don't want to say one of them. Let's say that the non-cancer person gets a partner. Um, they can, the, the cancer person may freak out because all of a sudden there's a third party situation. And this, we could see there could be some kind of I don't know if you'd call it triangulation, but that cancer person may start to manipulate the situation by not accepting that partner of their friend and trying and basically trying to make their friend pick between them and their partner by being kind of hostile to their partner. And maybe the more, more savvy, um, cancers, maybe with the moon and Scorpio, I don't know, uh, know how to do it more subtly so that they, you can't put your finger on it, but you know that that person doesn't approve of your partner and they're kind of basically making them choose between the two of them. So, um, another thing, um, that is related to this is between parent and child, a cancer parent, especially like a narcissistic parent will overprotect the child, smother the child. And then when it's time for the child to become an adult, that parent may 
act like that child is doing something wrong by in, individuating, by becoming their own person, by leaving the nest. Why aren't they going to community college so that they can spend another two years at home? Uh, I, I remember reading that some narcissists will deliberately um, make their children very helpless by not teaching them certain things so that they can become more independent. So they do everything for their child. And also in some cases are abusive, emotionally abusive, where they are critical of their child and, you know, make them feel like they are inept so that they are dependent and finances too. Um, that's another thing is controlling through the finances and having like ultimatums. If you want to continue to go to college, you have to do this and the other thing. Well, with cancers, it'll usually be some kind of an emotional thing. You have to call me every other day or whatever. You have to do this. You have to do that. Again, I don't think that there are any ironclad situations because there are some times where, you know, if someone you're, if you're doing something for someone and it seems to be a one way street, um, I don't think that that's healthy. I, I, it's not that you're giving to get, but you, it's just a natural flow in a relationship, uh, that is healthy. And so if you're giving, if you're doing something for someone that they need to be doing for themselves, that's enabling them. Um, so it's, it's all with the personal circumstances. There's no way you can just pinpoint one thing and say, okay, this is bad all the way around. Um, so anyway, um, yeah, it's very interesting how this can play out in different aspects. So if you are involved, if you identify yourself as involved with a cancer person and you feel that it's almost like a, I was going to say a hostage situation, but I mean like an oppressive type of situation, what can you do about it? Well, first of all, I always believe in being completely honest with compassion attached to it and just stating how you feel completely and say, I feel like this relationship is um, n you know, too involved that if I have other things going on in my life that you accuse me of not caring and um, that is the furthest thing from the truth. I really care about you. I love you, but I have to have my freedom. That's very important to me. It's nothing to do with you. It doesn't make you less worthy that I want my freedom. It's that I need that. And, um, basically you state what your needs are. Maybe it's a parent. You say, I need for us to talk to each other a maximum of once a week. I think that especially now, maybe later on we can be more relaxed on that. We don't have to have these rules, but I need, you're going to have to wean yourself off of me emotionally. And in some cases, if the parent is like, so attached that they balk at that, then you say, you know what? I'm raising it to a month now because you're obviously too attached to me and we need to have, um, a bit of breathing room from each other so that you can go back into yourself because it's all within yourself. It's not out there. Anything that you're looking for, whether it's love, whether it's appreciation, it's all within yourself. And if that person 
can't acknowledge the um what you're saying and then they start just um I'm not saying that they agree with you 100%, but if they can't say, oh, wow, I didn't realize that you felt that way, they can't like be at least a little bit accommodating, then you know that they have no intention of changing. And what they will do a lot of times is they will just double down on the accusations. Gosh, don't you see how insensitive you are? You're so selfish. You're, 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 you know, you're so self-absorbed. You're a narcissist. They may accuse you of being a narcissist. You have to stand your ground. You have to know who you are uh, with such a person because they can be very cunning when it comes to emotional matters. Remember, they're a water sign. So manipulation is something that they're a master at and you have to be able to not fall for the okie doke and get triggered into either compliance through guilt or whatever and then you know cave into that person and agree to continue on this path you know how you feel you know how it doesn't work for you so there's no reason to um, cave. So, um, anyway, I think I'm going to leave it there and I hope that this was helpful. If you would like a personal reading, the link is below. Take care. Bye.